What's up, YouTube? I got something real. L literally, this is going to be a fucking internet breaker. We're going to unpack, like, outgrowing leadership. This is an actual star in the roofing industry. He's built and, and scaled a roofing business, sold millions of dollars in roofing. And everybody knows him. He's got a podcast, and I've been working on connecting in with years. And, I, and getting him to this podcast has actually been years in the making. Look, if this podcast is as good as the conversation before y'all are in for a treat, we're going to be talking roofing sales. We're going to be talking residential, commercial. We're going to be talking about problems scaling in Texas with all this hailstorm in Dallas-Fort Worth. It's a free-for-all. People are starting their own business. There's unprofitable jobs. Insurance companies are a pain in the ass. Oh, shit. Done lost all our hair, Chuck. <laughs> Welcome to the Blue Collar Boardroom, buddy. Thank you, Lee. It's awesome to be here, my friend. Yeah, man. Uh, quick little background. Tell them your story. Yeah, so I've been in the industry for 25 years. I've done pretty much everything from being a truck driver. I, I ground drop deliveries and roof-loaded houses for years. Opened up a roofing supply company one time in North Carolina. Moved to Texas just randomly. Sold roofs for a while. Got into a deal where I got to open a dead roofing company back up and kind of run that. Where was that at? San Antonio. Okay. And uh, Where are you from? I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Originally. So you ain't a Texas boy. No, I'm a Buckeye. All right. And uh, I moved down there. I didn't even know anybody. So it was it was a cool experience, but I got kind of burned. When did you come to San Antonio? Uh, 2019, okay, January. So right before COVID. Right before you COVID. You move in, you start a company. How did that happen? Well, it was kind of a unique experience. I'm always finding myself in different rooms that I don't belong in, like right now. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I was in a room with a bunch of guys that were getting ready to buy this company that was out of business, and I just happened to be there. Was and that it was 10X like GrowthCon. No, I, was, it was a little bit before 10X GrowthCon right that I met these guys. Time? Yeah, right at the same time. It was like literally about two weeks later. Oh shit! And that was one of the key things because that's when I met all those people in the beginning, and mm -hmm. it just kind of worked out that way. And I like adventures, dude. So when someone asks me if I want to go to San Antonio, where I've never been, I don't know anybody there. We're we're gonna start this company, and by the way, it's already done, gone out of business. All right, that sounds fun. Let's go. So I packed up. I moved to San Antonio, and didn't really have a bad reputation, though, did they? No, they had a good, very good reputation. It just wasn't run properly, and this guy got into some trouble. Mm -hmm. Marital stuff happened, mm -hmm. and you know, so life. That happens. It does. So, so you come in to run the company. What was your job? What was your deal? Your, I was the general manager of so Rio Blanco. So you go Blanco. into a company that's completely starting from zero. What was the first thing that you did? I walked into an empty building uh -huh. and kind of looked around for a little bit. And then it was like, all right, what am I going to do? I don't know anybody. This company doesn't have a good brand because it's out of business. I hit my social media and I just started friend requesting everybody in San Antonio and if you're in San Antonio watching this today, thank you because you that's how little, I built it. You built a little community. Yeah, um, and it was it was that simple. My first job came from me. I was at a birthday party for one of my roofing crew guys, and I posted one of my little pictures like I always do, mm -hmm. and it appealed to this guy, and he called me up, and it just kind of took off from there. Well, those guys over at ASAP have always had the personal development at their core, and it was the first – about four years ago at the 10X Growth Con, they had a, a – I had a um, big you were right suite. above us, yeah. I had a big old suite, and they had a suite. Yep. And uh, I guess I kind of regret not coming down there and walking in and just chopping it up and shaking hands. I was looking for you the whole time. I I, I walked through a couple times. Was so busy because I had clients. I was doing deals. I should have just stopped because I think maybe would have made friends with the with the guys. It's weird. I'm trying to coach coming on later on. If you don't have that break bread moment, or if you're not really like, I never really got to meet the people. Yeah. So what was it like working with ASAP? Amazing. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the whole thing was great. They mm -hmm. took care of me. The The company was run from that organization. So ASAP Roofing, they're out of what, where are they from? Uh, East Texas, Tyler, East Texas. Texas. Okay. And I, there's so many different offices they have. I don't even know how many at this point, but right. they're all over the country. But their goal is to like get leaders like you. Yeah. And they I've, sold you on a vision of like you run your own business, we coach you and support you, and then we split profits in some way. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. It was a pretty sweet deal for yeah, me. I didn't cool. have to invest any money into the deal. Mm -hmm. I was willing to put sweat equity in, and it was cool. We started it off really well. COVID did hit, but I was able to hire a superstar and get him trained up. And, you did know, you COVID. Did during COVID? 
No, not as much as we should have. I mean, we tried, but we, we got into the digital stuff pretty good. We were doing videos and, and stuff like that, uh-huh. trying to, you know, it was get people mine. to listen to us. Yeah, it was a fucking gold mine it, knocking it, doors in COVID. Yeah, it probably was. It and was. that was one of those things that I was a dumbass. I sent a fucking letter out to my people said, do not knock doors do, under any circumstance. Made people sign it and it killed sales. But then sure enough. I was all these other companies, my clients like, we had the best sales week ever. Right. Everybody's <laughs> like, at home. Fuck I it. mean, what are go. you going to do? All mm-hmm. right. It turned out to be pretty good. Yeah. It, I mean, we didn't do enough of that during COVID, but it did. How did COVID affect you? It made the company grow. I mean, we got like, I think what happened was it got a little too big too quick. Honestly, we went from Because you were hiring business. salespeople? No, because we Did expanded into new territories. We opened new branches. Before you had salespeople? Yeah. That's a little backward. It was. It was. You so know, it was a situational thing, and it was like, all right, I had have a plan. a storm or what? There was a storm, yes. Now, right. I was set up in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. We had a satellite college office. Sto- college Station storm? Yep. I had a storm in College Station. We were there. Mm-hmm. I was from College Station. I lived there for seven years before I... I did the move. Mm -hmm. So I had a book of business there. I had associates. I had, you know, property managers that I was good with. So we got in and everything was going awesome. Like it was, it was pacing pretty well. Right. Mm -hmm. I got kind of thin because I was running back and forth from three offices, but it was, it was working. And honestly, Lee, what happened was personal stuff kind of got in the way for me. And I had to walk away from it for a little while. My mom got sick. She had mm-hmm. dementia. I had to take care of her. Mm-hmm. I had her come down to my home in Texas. It's and tough did, when you don't have a sales manager. It's fucking impossible, you were dude. The, you're, you're like doing multiple things. I was doing a sort lot of Sort of operations stuff. manager and sales manager. Exactly. And then and like when and when you're gone, there was, there was nothing was there. Was there to sales keep. people still there? Yeah, but what, they didn't have any, any it's like guidance. like when, when the cat's away, the mice will play. Yeah, exactly. And, and what, that's what they what, did. They what, played. What do they play? I fuck if I know. Fuck they did if nothing, I know. Nothing I could find out. I mean, there was not a whole lot of activity that went on. Right. Thank God, because what did was kind of messed up, and I had to fight to get all that stuff back in place. And throughout that whole thing, and through the four years of personal growth, of being around people that were of that mindset. What, what was the big win, though? Because maybe College Station wasn't the big win. Where, where, where was the big win? College San Antonio was the big win. I so mean, let's we talk got about it the going. Big win. So. It was tough dealing with um, COVID, dealing yep. with your mom passing away. This is you were going from being a salesman. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about your successes before that as a salesman. Oh, dude. what were you good at? Yeah, I'm good at selling. That's mm-hmm. that's my passion. How do you win the neighborhood? I I'm How do present you win in the neighborhood. The neighborhood. Okay. I show up. How do you win them? I go in and I'm I I door knock for mm-hmm. one. Any neighborhood I'm in, they're gonna know pitch. what I'm doing. Give, give me your door pitch. All right, hey, I'm Chuck. I'm uh, working in the neighborhood. Hey Chuck, next door. hey Chuck, man, appreciate you. Not interested. You ever heard of Lee Hate? Oh, man, that guy, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that guy is. Right? So sign with me today, and, and you won't have to deal with Lee. That, that's how that no, works, no, right? No, I got gotcha. you. No, <laughs> knock, knock my door for a roof. All right. Hello? Hey, how you doing today, sir? Hey, I'm good. My name's Chuck. I'm over in the neighborhood right now. You probably see some of your neighbors getting their roofs taken care of, seeing some of the signs in the neighborhood and some of the trucks. I've seen it. Yes, I've seen it. I wanted to stop by for two reasons. I'll stop right there. I, right. I, don't, I, I don't have any damage. No, sir. I, I, I totally understand that. The neighbors didn't believe they had damage either. Mm. That's that's what's happening. Everybody in the neighborhood, they got damage. If you didn't get damage, maybe you're the lucky one. You should go play the lottery. But I'd be willing to bet you probably do have a little bit of damage that you can't see from the ground. Take me five minutes to get up there, take some you pictures. You seem like and a nice guy. You. Maybe I'll give you a call. I'm a little busy. Can you give me your business card? Yeah, I'm going to give you my card anyway because we're doing multiple projects here in the neighborhood. I'm very busy. I don't have time to do the inspection today. Anyhow, I just wanted to come by and talk to you, let you know that we're going to be doing this work. If anything out of the ordinary happens, you've got my number right there. Give me a call. Let me know if, if wrappers blow up on your, your property. If anything that you see doesn't meet your standards, and I'll take care of it immediately. And uh, watch what we're doing because you're going to want to be the next one on the block. And then it's follow it up and follow it up and follow it up. Yep. Um, of course, uh, talk to me like once you get going, how you spread like word of mouth referral. I ask for it. I mean, I think one thing sales reps don't do enough is ask for referrals. You know, a lot of people are like in and out. It's a quick deal, especially with asphalt where it is, you know, relatively quick turnaround time. So I think a lot of people just don't ask, mm-hmm. but I'm not that guy. I'm all about it. It's like, hey, I want everybody in the neighborhood to know that you've got the best roof. When I put my yard sign up, that's my my little hook is like, let me put the sign up so all your neighbors know that you're the smartest one on the block. 
you know. There's, there's a, in Texas, well, there's not a license requirement. No. You got a free for all. <laughs> Roofers are a commodity. Create sort of the Wild West environment. For sure. I call them cowboys. You know what a cowboy is? Cowboy is either a spinoff from a roofing company that starts their own, they're a one man show, a roofing salesman that tries to be a roofing business owner, but really just as a salesman. A lot of times a guy just didn't want to follow the rules, so he spun off on his own. There's so many of these in Texas. There's a lot of what I call uncoachables. And so, I don't know, can you tell me about the biggest problems you see about salespeople in Texas? Like roofing sales. Yeah. I mean, the fact is, Lee, I mean, you've been in this 20 years. Does it wore you out? It's literally traumatizing, <laughs> right? Yeah, dude. Like, I stopped doing it because it was just, it was why, enough. Why, why? What was the cause of to stop doing training and educating? Because this is something that all the business owners suffer when the guys cause them pain when they don't work, when they don't work out. It makes, like, why didn't I fucking just make money doing it the old way? What's your, what's your old way? I don't know. That, sell, that's the right? whole problem. Yeah, my old way was to never grow, to never get any bigger because I can do a million, two million, whatever in residential sales by myself. Mm -hmm. And if you want to build a $10 million or $20 million company, that dude is not the right guy to get you there because he doesn't know how. Mm -hmm. So the biggest problem I see, like you said, is a lot of people... I, God bless Texas and God bless America, right? This is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You can go out and you can, you can live the American dream, right? Mm -hmm. I mean... Anybody can start a roofing company. Yeah. I tell no Mrs. Jones. No license required. Mrs. Jones, after you get done, you watch my crew, you can go knock your neighbor's house and you could be a roofing company just like me, you know? And that's not even bullshit. That's, I'm being truthful, Miss Jones. You can go do that. The problem is I think too many guys get a little bit of success early, maybe hit a storm, mm -hmm. but don't have any experience at retail, don't know anything about commercial, understand asphalt shingles and pretty much that's it, and then say... I'm about to go and take over the industry. I'm about to go start my own company. And God bless them. You know, it takes balls to do that. What do you but, usually see this history, the track of these guys? I'm going to be honest. It doesn't work because you don't have the skills required to understand how to run a business. I'm a sales guy at heart. I'll be the first one to admit I didn't know shit about what I was doing with any of that. Thank God I had an entire back office taking care of me or... God only knows what would have happened, right? So I think that sometimes we make it look easier than it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just part of the world we live in. People on social I think media. What's hard about roofing is that you have to document the damage and do an estimate. And a lot of people just want to sign a contingency. Yeah, and just let the insurance decide for you. Well, how, how, does you how do you approach it? With me, I'll be honest, I probably was not totally right in my approach because you I would, would train people. I would train people to do it. To do what? To do their estimates and to understand, you know, the ins and outs. I would spend a good amount of time with my sales so reps. So the guy goes, he signs up a contract. What what do you require from a guy? From to get the job built? Yeah, just to like go through the process. How do you teach them to go through the insurance claim process okay. and getting it bought? Yeah. So we just sit down with the homeowner, explain it away, you know, this is how this process works. Have you ever been through it? We explained appreciation to them. You know, a lot of people in Texas, they don't know. And a lot of people take it for granted and they just assume just that the homeowner somebody does. somebody in the roofing business that does multiple millions of dollars, five million a year, if he knew what depreciation was. In Florida, what, did you remember what he said? No. He said no. Yeah. There's roofers that don't understand it. Depreciation is money that's held back on an insurance claim that will be released once the work is completed. And it's like billing from a hospital. The roofing business, when you work with insurance companies, there has to be this billing cycle. A lot of people drop the ball on this. They don't understand it. Big time, right? And yeah. I think that's a huge problem. I think if you start a new company without the experience to know how to do that or to have someone on your side doing that. And so you're passionate about what? I'm passionate about helping people not screw up. I've been doing this 25 years and I fucked up every possible way that you can. How much have you sold? Oh my God, Lee, I don't even know. How it, long have you been doing it? Millions. I've been in, in residential commercial sales for 10 years and so I was in distribution. So you're by yourself, I mean, how many of your jobs a year is that? I think the last year was 150 or so. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. You know, not I'm not a bazillion dollar producer, but in residential, I think I'm pretty damn good. You and your teams have touched thousands of roofs. For sure. Wow. Tens of thousands. Wow. Yeah. And before that, I was in distribution, so I understand. The back end. Yeah, I get the back end. I get how small companies get themselves in trouble, you know? How do they do that? How, what's the you, biggest places? You start off with this big dream. Like there was a hailstorm in Texas last yeah, night, Yeah, like you're right? going to buy a Rio Blanco and you're going to blow it up and you're going to, you don't need no, you don't need none of Lee's help. 
Yeah, right. That we I didn't. got my own fucking program. <laughs> I'm my own social sales queen. Well, fuck. I'm pretty good though. You got to give you me are, that. No, you are. All right, that's what you I, I'm all good. that. I'm all that matters, bro. Right? No, I was you're, doing you're, it. You always were a great student. That's why I always was trying to get you to get mentorship. And oh, dude, I've I've wanted to work with you for many years, and, and, no and, doubt. And so, um, you know, in in a lot of times this happens. A roofing contractor. Um, they want to do it their way. Everyone has their own ideas. And my way is not my way. My dad and my uncle taught me. I took a lot of stuff from all my coaches, and I take a good piece from each one of my best students. And yeah, and, and put it's, everything into a big pot I can't mix even, it up. I can't even take credit for it. Just got to give credit to the God. Yeah, I respect that you know because I mean? it's true. I mean, It's you not know. me. It's just literally the best practices from everybody. And, and just putting them into play, taking action on it is a huge thing that a lot of people don't do. Yeah, well, a lot of times I'll go to somebody who is a lot like me, and it's funny. It's like the Jack Harlow song. The ones the most like me are the ones that hate me most. Not hate, but can accept influence. I can appreciate it's fucking that. Fucking ridiculous. I can appreciate that. I mean, we're we're guys, right? I mean, it is. It's an ego thing. Of course, it's a fucking ego thing. It's an ego thing across the board for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was talking to somebody about that the what other do you think day. Good, why? Why? You know, my perfect contractor a lot of times is doing. You know, like Ricky, he's doing two million, and I take him to seven point eight, and then we take him to eighteen. So he does no insurance; he's retail. Then we take another guy like Richie, who was in Florida. His this year's guy who went from two million to eight million, and basically this year he's going to do because he's got multiple locations. I don't know, maybe fifteen million dollars over two years with the program. Right. And you know the the idea is is like. You coach, a lot of people don't accept influence even when they pay, but the ones that do, man, it's amazing to watch these stories. That's what this is all about, right? And I can't say enough, like two weeks ago, I'm sitting at my house and I get a phone call and it's Lee Haight calling me up. And you're like, dude, what are you doing? You know, and I'm kind of in, in between things and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. And it's like, I don't know what. You, you you just called me up and said, come down here, you know, let's do something. And I jumped on a plane like the next day, right? Because I understand the opportunity for what it is. I'm all about being coached. I've always been that way. And I don't know, dude, it gets me into situations like this where. Ironically, I, you know, everyone watching this, they, they want training on insurance. They want training on roofing sales. They want to uh, have a coach that understands principles like uh, recruit, hire, train, retain. And what I'm teaching you when you get close is how to make videos that sell better, how to truly scale with our recruit, hire, train, retain methods, what hardcore door to door means in our culture. Mm -hmm. And you know, what's cool about it is here you can, you can go out there in the field, sell roofs in the major leagues of Florida. What, what attracted you as a roofing salesman to Florida? Lee hate. I mean, I'll be honest. Well, even without Lee hate, I'm going to, I'm going to be real. There is something very sexy about roofing. Now, we haven't really gone there because you, you kind of want to coach more, right? For sure. I mean, I've Why done... Why do you want to coach done, more than you want to roof? Well, I've got to do that for the last couple of years. Yeah. I, got to, I got to go out on the road and I got to visit roofing companies and work in sales meetings and train. And you found out people would pay you thousands of dollars. Okay, yeah, from, right? From the content. They'll pay you the money for this and they won't threaten to sue you. They won't talk shit on Better Business Bureau about, you know, I stepped on a nail, I did this or that. They're appreciative, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, if I'm counting, every one that I went to, there was a million dollar producer that was built in that office. You built a million dollar producer at every place you hired was hired as a consultant. Yeah, and I had a, a big part in it at wow. least, you know? And when I was in, in the company by myself, I, I trained four or five of them and I oh, did it shit. myself. So I understand how to do that. And for what's me- your, What's your blueprint of making a million dollar salesman? Let's you gotta, that. you gotta have the energy, man. Like energy is first and most important. I like that. Yeah, to me, how if do you you're generate just bored, more energy? I just, I be myself around What'd you people. Do this morning? I got up, I went to the gym, I hit seven. No, I hit eight miles on the treadmill this morning before seven a.m. Damn. And that's my routine. I get up at three, three thirty every day. I go yep. to the gym. Mm -hmm. I've, I, you know, three years ago I was a fat ass. Mm -hmm. I was completely out of shape. I was sad, miserable, looking in the mirror, not liking what I was seeing. And it's like, dude, you have to you have to make a change. You have to be willing to just say, 
Nobody else can do it but you. Well, I was a fat ass too at the same time. Right? So we've evolved over the last three years. You know, you're Isn't fighting in cages and stuff, and it's like I'm running in half marathons and doing shit I never would have thought possible. But that was the one thing during this whole process with, with what was going on in my life that kept me sane, dude. Like I would have lost my freaking mind if well, I was still that guy. that's why we get guy. along so well. I have a core value of personal development that is like the number one thing. So mm -hmm. if y'all are watching this and you love getting better, then dude, just comment personal development below because you're on team get better. But at my company, if you don't want to get better, then we got a problem. Exactly, right? And then what happens like when you want to get better and you feel like you've outgrown where you're at? For me, you know, I, I've done that several times. I reinvent myself maybe. How do you prevent that from happening? Because always you got to look back at, from the owner's perspective. How did they, how do they prevent, you know, from this happening? I think that's a great question. In the last several events that I've been involved in, I've gotten opportunities of a lifetime, right? Mm -hmm. Like just crazy things that I should have never been asked to do. I should have never been asked if I wanted to go open a roofing supply company in Charlotte with a complete stranger that I met in the parking lot the day that we opened it, right? Wow. But I did that and we built it up. And the thing that, that I think is a common occurrence in everyone, I give way too much of myself. Mm -hmm. I put way too much, I invest way too much of myself into shit to where I'm fully in, you know? And if everybody around me is not at that same level, mm -hmm. I get, I get kind of irritated. Now you, know? you, see, you see how I operate. Exactly. I, I totally understand how you operate. And, and like, it's you, like, you meet me, uh, you've met me at the events. Mm -hmm. You've met me um, hanging out, but now you're like in the middle of my, tell them like, what's it like? It's exactly what my days look like on a lower scale for me. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm walking around, always trying to find stuff to do, trying to keep things going, mm -hmm. bringing the energy. When you walk in the room, dude, it's felt, you know? That's what I try to be as well. I try to walk into the room and have the energy levels spike up. Yeah, blue collar BMF. Right. Bad motherfucker. Yeah. That's and that's people too many soft motherfuckers out there. Too many. And the truth of the matter is You've been is, soft before? Fuck yeah. I've been very soft. I was three soft pounds. Soft as baby shit. Worse than that. Baby diarrhea, dude. Oh, I was like God. really soft and a lot of roofers are soft as fuck. Yeah. Be, let's let's talk about them. All right. Let's let's <laughs> climb. Softies. What's up, hold softies? On, hold on. I'm, I ran I'm, eight miles this I'm gonna morning. hurt your feelings a little bit. You're not. Uh not yours. All right. I'm talking about the audience. All right. Well, you guys are screwed then. Well, I grew up a roofer, dog. I thought in order to be a roofer, you gotta smoke them Marlboro lights. Oh boy, I used to fucking go outside and kill myself all the time. Um, but uh, I mean, the reality is, is that my grandma died of lung cancer and I started realizing that the fucking every time I'm smoking, I'm fucking killing myself. Yeah, you're getting closer to the end than you would be if you weren't, right? Yeah, yeah. so I started when I learned in marketing. I'm hanging out with younger guys that are smarter, that are all about the ads and no one, none of the marketers smoke. And it's because like they, I, I guess when I became a marketer, I actually studied the old cigarette ads and how they put it in the woman's mouth and all it's just like there's a way that they, they manipulate everything and just get it into kids and uh, you know the body oh, dude, the, candy cigarettes i had some the other day in san antonio exactly so it's like you know once you realize you're being manipulated to be a customer for life on something that's going to kill you and make your life terrible it's like fuck right fuck any big corporation trying to fucking make me a slave dude same thing with blood pressure medication. I'm fat. I have to take blood pressure pills, dude. Yeah. Guess what those are designed for? They're designed to freaking get you to where if you don't take your blood pressure pill, you're going to have a stroke or some shit. Yeah, no shit. And that's whether it's big pharma or it's the fucking uh, Big Macs. Right. Or, I, don't, I don't eat at fast food. You yeah. know, I've been here for a while. Roofers have a problem with that. Oh, they're it's in their, fast, they're right? They're in their truck. I have a problem with it when I'm running around too. I mean, I, I eat chicken sandwiches or I eat salad when I can. I mean, I... But what's what's your cheat code for losing weight what, for, uh, on a roofer diet? Chipotle. Chipotle. What's up? <laughs> I, 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 like eat, that I shit. eat at Chipotle probably ten times a week. Nice. Like that's the only thing I'm down I with do. That diet. Because what's yeah. your go-to at Chipotle? Uh, I get a chicken bowl with both beans, whatever kind of rice, extra cheese, corn, and vinaigrette dressing, which. That's a little bit counterproductive, hey, but it's good as hell. That's still get the fast vinaigrette. Food. If you still, go to if it is, that's but still fast food. If you go to Chipotle and you don't get the vinaigrette, you don't know what you're missing. So we've got this conference coming up. You're gonna help me sell tickets. You're coaching people in the elite program. You're coaching people for Sky Diamonds. You know, um, you've been talking to these guys here for almost you know a couple of weeks now. Uh, wh where do you see their biggest hiccup is? I think a lot of people. 
still get hung up on that small mindset of it's a lot of money mm -hmm. when in reality it's not Lee mm -hmm. you, you put this money in it's an investment right and what an investment does it holds you accountable mm -hmm. and I think most people in this world are not willing to be held accountable quite frankly I'm, I'm one I, of those I, people I, I that, think it goes they all say it's the money I think it goes, but it's not it goes way fucking it's never the money, money. And you I said asked it. about 70% of them have you ever hired a coach no never done it nope never done it yeah do you ever never did it you ever never did it? got to hire a coach and I'm like well I'm glad I can be your first it's like right. literally I call it popping someone's cherry right but it's it's that mindset but that but I that, already know I, what I I'm guess doing that's the mindset that they don't like no because they think that I'm trying to close them or get them nobody understands what's going on until they're actually involved in the deal and then they realize well, they don't oh, understand damn. my story either because i didn't get here without getting closed right. i didn't i didn't get here without paying for coaching the biggest breakthrough for me was when i was able to have this idea to sell grant card on a roof he sold me a hundred thousand in consulting by the time it's all done i created sky diamonds university Next thing I know, I'm holding my standard to Grant standard and I'm learning and I'm evolving and I'm the Grant Cardona roofing. And I realize I got to move to Florida. And all these things start to happen. I hire a lot of other coaches. What happens is like, dude, none of it would have started if I'd have been like, fuck that guy trying to close me on that bullshit program. No, Lee, I have gotten every freaking program in the industry. I've had Sky Diamonds University since the early days of it. Seven or eight years ago, I got it. Mm -hmm. And I've, I, that's always been my thing. It's something I was really proud of was last year I was doing a consulting with another guy, and he was doing the slideshow, and the slideshow, it, it was a picture of me, and it was mm -hmm. like Chuck is the only person who – before he became a company owner, mm. spent all of his own money on my product. He was the only one that was a sales rep that paid for my product. And it was like, that's my thing, you know? You I like, had Cardone University, I paid out of pocket for it because it means more to you that way, right? Not just that, dude, it shows that you care about personal development, and to me that's most important. And people that are constantly just trying to get that for free and do as little of that as possible, they don't align with me. And so a lot of times I'm, I'm trying to make a, a contractor or come to their level where mm -hmm. they're afraid to ask for help. They're, they're too humbled. But I just got to say to you guys watching this, you're straight full of shit. I talked to a guy who was 40 something years old. He'd been in the business a long time. He did a hundred, 150 roofs a year, but he was trying to build a team and he was full of shit. He was telling himself all kinds of bullshit stories of how it wasn't possible, trying to make up these reasons why, you know, this wasn't going to work or it was too expensive. And what's funny is I'm sitting there calling him out on his shit. And we start talking about an analogy of like how you have to check your ego at the door at the jujitsu room. And he said, I've been training jujitsu for 13 years. Mm -hmm. and this is roofer for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so my jujitsu coach is coming in to beat the shit out of me and give me some training. He goes, give me that phone. He goes, who trains you? What's your lineage? How long have you been doing this? What kind of belt are you? And he goes, <laughs> I've been watching uh, UFC uh, since 1998. Well, the dude was full of fucking shit. Exactly. He, he just like all the rest. I watched it on TV. Punk ass motherfuckers. And I hate to say that, but if you're not self aware, you don't have a prayer. Exactly. And so, if you think that you're a badass, but you don't have a social media presence, <laughs> if you think you're a fucking roofing company, but you don't know insurance. <laughs> If you fucking are it's out tough, there as right? an operator selling your own jobs, but you can't build a team, you're a fucking slave to your own business. Look, all of you are like trapped in fucked up cycles and it's not your fault. Okay. Whether it's corporate America trapping you, big pharma, big banks, they didn't teach you the fucking things, the mindset, the skills. And so many of my middle-class brothers, they're fucking trapped, you know? <laughs> It, I'm pissed off bad. at everybody, like, with the pronouns and fucking trying to make her kids just soft as baby shit. But even the, like, like make America great again fucking Trumpsters, the roofers, some of them are fucking softer than the freaking transvestites. Dude, it's, it's, it's an epidemic, it right? Really and I'm not going to lie. I've seen it for years. Because I've, I've been it, dude. If you're, you're going to live in this world where it's like, get all worked up about this shit going on that's not in your control, but you're not going to take care of your body. You're not going to go out there and take care of your skills so that you can get the bank account. You're not going to go out there and rise above the noise 
with the surrounding yourself with the right people, put yourself in that environment. We have so much information, so much access that you have to literally lie to yourself to, to avoid. For sure. And so it's just and that's what they're doing though. I get a little frustrated, dude. I, I'm a Trump supporter. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a diehard Republican conservative, but there's so many idiots on both sides of the aisle and looking at the contractors that are like, I'm a hundred million dollar roofer. I, I did not get here without a lot of failures. I think that what makes a good coach is experience. I've been coaching Thank for seven you. years. Yeah. So I, I, I've had to get better at my program. And I think that the numbers and the results in the community, it's different. What's different about my community versus like another group. That's just like, I think, like, I mean, like win the storm. You're, Yours is different. I mean, there's just a different vibe about the whole thing, you know? Yeah. I haven't gone to the other conference. I only went one time. Did you go to RoofCon? Yeah, I've gone to RoofCon. RoofCon's got a good vibe. I've gone to RoofCon the last couple of years, and I like the guys at RoofCon. I'm friends with everybody over there. They're mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. um, yours is just different, you know? You come to Lee's conference, and you see Lee and Best Damn Roofer fighting in a cage. And I promise you don't see that shit but at you RoofCon. But you also see me like standing next to Jocko, who is everyone's hero in extreme ownership and leadership and him giving me lessons and realizing that I hired all these speakers to help me. Yeah. These are the guys that have helped me. And guys like Dustin Poirier and like, you think why am I gonna like put a fighter in there? But guys, you don't realize it. If you it's wanna a be a bad motherfucker in this business, there's gonna be times where the stress from cash flow is a bitch. There's gonna be times where your best friend stabs you in the back. There's gonna be times when you outgrow leadership or you have people that leave. There's gonna be all these different situations that you have to have mental fitness for. You have to understand that it doesn't matter how rough the seas are. It's, you know, smooth seas is not where like a good sailor is made. And if you wanna be yeah. a bad motherfucker in this blue collar game, dude. You, you gotta go through you, some shit, you right? Better, you better have the intestinal fortitude the nuts, the staying power, the heart of a motherfucking champion. Yeah, and th who's better, right? I mean, this this business will kill people. It'll it knock has. you down. It has. It's killed like a lot of people around me. Me my too. My uncle from suicide, some of my best friends from drug overdose, and I see an epidemic in America. We talk about soft. These guys, they'll party their balls off and snort cocaine full of fentanyl and go cheat on their wives with strippers and fucking end up dead. Yeah. Isn't it funny? It, it, it's it's horrible. And I've been in this These 25 years. These are the same years, uncoachable fucking it. guys that they already look, got it figured they out. Look, right? They look they look like me. A lot of them have decent businesses. Um, it's sad. It is. That's that's the old way of this industry, you know. And no, that's, that's what the I'm new way to too. It's not it's not it's not just the old way that people do drugs. People are getting straighter. It's yeah. It's but different. I'm not Mr. Clean either. No, dude. I'll, fuck, I'm not Mr. Fucking Sober Lifestyle over here. No, I, I, anybody that knows me knows if I'm talking like that, okay, whatever. You know? So how do you balance that? Uh, discipline. I mean, honestly, you have to look at yourself and say, dude, what's, what's getting me further in life? When I was sitting at my house as a sales rep and I was pissed off because I wasn't getting the commissions I thought I was getting or whatever, and I'm drinking 12 dude, beers a night. that's what all of them are fucking doing. They're right? all cussing their boss. Yeah. Not doing personal development. That's what got me to where I'm at. Are they watching I, Jerry Springer? And on? Are they watching Netflix? Are you fucking sitting there reading conspiracy theories while, you, uh, while, while you're cussing the person that's paid you commissions that you're about to earn? I mean, what are you, you know? I always watch Jerry Springer. So, yeah, that was part of my deal. But I, it was just. I like Jerry. It was feeling bad for yourself. Did because, you see that he got hoaxed when he died? No. So that, Is he not dead? They. He did. Oh, he did. But right, so Jerry. basically, yeah. Way to go, Jerry. You you, you put it out. Jerry there. and the Iron Sheet. Yeah, man. All the all the all the, you did it. You put all the trailer trash on the map. Good job. Good Thank job, you, Jerry. America, um, baby. America. But uh, he had some video that made it look like he left his will to some. Oh yeah, to his other kids that weren't really was, his it kids. Was it was all fake. It yeah, all I saw the look on his real, real children. Like, they, they were like, like <laughs> no. they weren't screaming Jerry. That's no, for damn sure. No. They were pretty upset. But no. that that's that's the but the, the way roofing of the world. business can be like Jerry Springer. <laughs> it is like if Jerry you, Springer. Give me your best Jerry Springer roofing moment. All right, so uh, this one's kind of. I mean, it's not like a fighting moment, but this is this will tell you about the roofing industry, and it don't get any more Jerry Springer than this. About three years ago in San Antonio, my crew was up on a roof. 
I could take you to the house right now because I'll never forget this. And they're up there doing their thing, you know, and it's hot out. And I'm, I'm checking on my guys constantly because I'm, I'm, you know, I want you all off the roof every 15 minutes. I don't care if it takes two days to do this. I'll pay you more. I don't want anybody getting hurt. Well, one of my guys was a little badass and he's freaking brrr, and he stuck himself right in the hand with a nail, right? And I, we've seen that a many, a many times in the career. That's nothing, you know, anybody that's shot a nail through your hand, it's, it's hardcore, but it ain't like the hardest thing I've ever seen. So what do you do when you get a nail stuck in your hand, Lee? You got to pull that shit out, right? It's a fucking ring shank and it's coming out, right? So the cool thing about this is these guys are all family. They're all cousins and brothers and brother-in-laws and fucking the whole family, right? Dude, God for, forbid that this was my family, but they, lo they loved him. They pulled the thing out. The dude's screaming. They hold him down. What do you got to do to this wound? You got to disinfect it, man. And we don't have any kind of disinfectant around, so you know the old the old friggin' way to do it. Booth? No, they pissed all over his hand. Like oh, three, three God, dudes took a piss God. on him. There you go, right? golden shower for I've days. Seen, I've seen that. I've seen. I remember one time my, my the golden homeowner. shower roof. Oh, it was horrible, but it looked like it. Were it you witnessing it. it? I was there. Oh, you were have, you witnessed the golden shower. I didn't partake okay, in it, but clear, I, that, I, clear I, that up. I know what happened. So any of y'all roofers out uh, there, if you can't beat that, pack the fucking uh, bring some some spray, dude. That just was humiliating. I mean, I mean, you, that's like cousin Jerry, come and it's on, like, man. dude, everybody's gonna talk about that at Christmas for so the rest of your life. So did he go to the life. hospital? No, dude. He was back up on the roof like twenty minutes later, and his thing healed up the next day. It was like. If, wow. if that ever happened to me, it's a fucking great I'm not story. letting any of you guys piss on my hand, but I might just, you know, turn around real quick and see what's up because it, it, it worked, you know. But that's I've, roofer toughness, too. I've a roofer toughness. Speaking of that, I guess I had a Jerry Springer moment. With this He was not a big guy, so he needed he was mad at me. I'd cut off his draw because he wasn't producing, probably because he was working for another company. And uh, he just was mouthy and entitled and a drunk and. So he got his courage up and drank, 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 and during the middle of the day came to the office, and this fucker had UFC gloves on. So oh, like, no, dude. Fine. If you're coming to fight, don't wear <laughs> don't, gloves, bro. Don't, come on, oh, I'm kicking you in the nuts, dude. I'm eye-gouging you. I'm three-stooging so you. He, he did come at me very fast, and I'm, I didn't gloves. take him as serious. And well, in, how could in, you? In, in, God. In the, in the right hand, he had a sock full of D batteries. All right, and now that we're yeah, going somewhere. Yeah, okay, and I got he was you. short, so he knew he had to have reach, and I've like blocked it, but I didn't block the like curl. You around. didn't know that it was going to be a freaking yeah, thing so of the batteries, fucking, right? The fucking sock full of batteries hits me in the side of the face. I'm pissed now. I pick this motherfucker up and slam him down and fucking break his like nose on the ground and hold him there and rub his nose on the ground and then kick him out. And he spits all over my wife's car. Cops come. Yo, that's not even the most Jerry Springer moment I would I would I would say. Oh, dude, I could do a podcast for f ten days of nothing but stories of shit that I've seen in the the roofing industry, homeowners, fights on job sites. Give us all the worst kinds. homeowner. Give us give us the worst homeowner. <sighs> all right, this one's oh man. Yeah, come I got on. some bad ones. Give okay? me give me the one that you don't want to tell. All right, this one's hardcore. Right? All right, all right, come on. This one's hardcore. So. I'm I'm doing a bunch of houses in Texas. There's a storm. Yeah. And I'm doing all these houses kicking ass. I got like this whole subdivision. Everybody loves me. I'm asking for referrals like we talked about, right? Yeah. Who can I help? That's just like you. You guys love me. You see what I'm going to do. I want to do it for them. No, that's a good question for referrals. That's a good nugget. Yeah. Don't go up there and say like, you know, can you send me to anybody? Do you know anybody? Yeah, give me more business. Yeah. That's bullshit. What you know, you who can I help you out? You know, who do you know that I can help yeah, out? Who do you know that I can help? Right. And people are cool. So they're like, my daughter. These folks were super customers. Like, perfect, right? So I'm like, hell yeah, the daughter. This will be great. I don't know, Lee. Like, this daughter was not, like, part of their bloodline. There was something going on there where, like. Apple the, fell way far. Way from far from the tree. Like, down here. And it didn't mow its yard for, like six months I, I walk up to this house and i'm like this can't be the right house like nobody lives here dude this mm -hmm. thing is i'm not shitting you the grass was five feet tall mm -hmm. there's a car in the driveway but it's like covered with grass so i'm like huh i call the number and she answers the phone and she's like oh yeah i'm home all right cool am, am i at the right place 
And I'm thinking, please, God, you know, tell me I'm next door and I'm supposed to be over there. She's like, oh, yeah, I'll be right out. Well, the front door opens and here she comes, right? And I'm like, oh. the roof isn't bad. It's probably about 45 squares. It's a decent house on the outside, other than the fact that there's the obvious signs of neglect, five foot tall grass and cars. And I start walking around. It's usually a good sign to just fucking skip. I know, but I'm a young salesman at this point. I just helped the parents. The parents were awesome, you know, like I wanted to skip, but I couldn't. So this gets, this gets kind of deep. All right. I, I do the inspection. I get the adjuster out there. We get the roof bought. I see all kinds of other signs, but I'm like, all right, you know, this is so far so good. And I've got it in my mind. I'm going to, I'm closing this deal. Like I didn't have a contingency or anything with her. Cause it was like, at any point, if you decide you don't want to work with me, we're, we're good. Right. I'm not going to fight to keep you, but I did all that. Everything's cool. We go out, we do the roof, but before we do the roof, we got to sign the paperwork. I go into the house. Right. And this is when I found out what I'm really dealing with. A hoarder. Dude, the it worst. is the worst fucking thing I've ever been to, Lee. I you go had to in, sit in there? I, for like an hour. Oh, my Dude, God. Dude, for an hour. It was fucking trash. Okay. And Describe for homeowners, what you saw. Okay. For people in the industry, right? I know sales trainers that say this, <laughs> and I disagree with them wholeheartedly. Yeah. If the homeowner offers you a glass of water, you don't have to take that. You do not have to take a glass of water from just any random ass homeowner. Because I'm not drinking water from that house, Lee. <laughs> she offered me a glass of fine you Texas said, tap water, and I was like, no, no, thank you. I just I'm drank good. coffee on my way over. I'm yeah. totally hydrated. Like, yeah. let's focus on this deal. Let's get me the hell out of here. What's right? like in there? Is it, is there There's it, a mixture of stuff, right? Yeah. You ever had, like, muscle pains, and you yeah. get that Ben Gay shit, yeah, and you yeah. spray that? Yeah. That, right. um, got ben there was Gay. a lot of cat piss. Ben Gay, cat piss. Ben Gay, cat piss. I saw the cat pissing on the wall while I was sitting at the kitchen table, and I don't think that's normal. Yeah. Like, cats don't just normally piss on There's walls. There's a litter like, box. Something was up with the litter box. Like, it maybe was full. Something. Cats don't do that, but this cat did it right in front of me, right? So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm still starting. I'm still in the pocket, right? I'm a salesman, and I'm, like, focused. And I'm like, all right, we're going to do the Atlas. We're going to do the weathered wood. We're going to do this. We're going to collect this at this time. Deductible first check. Here's this. D does this all make sense? I didn't even tell her what. I, you don't even get to pick a color. I'm like, we're doing weathered wood. Like, let's go. She's getting ready to sign, and here comes her son, right? And her son, God bless him, he has autism, oh. which I felt bad. Yeah. But sometimes things happen, and they're very abnormal for someone that's not around that right yeah. her son comes and he doesn't have any clothes on right? oh come on butt naked right and he's standing <laughs> right naked here naked ordered he's standing right here okay and the kid's like probably 13 or 14 oh wow he's standing right here beside me oh and I'm my still God. like i'm like this right he got no clothes on bro and i'm standing right <laughs> oh. here like does the mama say get in your room no no what? mom says hold on a second chuck Goes and gets him some cheese out of the fridge and starts feeding him. And I'm sitting there like, all right, you know, this is cool. I'm, I, I got no problem with this. But it's not typical. It's not a day in the life. What about right? underwear? Fuck no, nothing, dude. No underwear. Nothing, bro. Okay? This kid's <laughs> fucking swinging. He's got it going on, and he doesn't <laughs> care. And I, I got to respect it. If I could do that. Uh, I'd do it. Hey, right. If someone was sitting at my kitchen table and I could stand like that. you trying to get my mom? I'd do it, right? So... I get through that whole deal and it's like we sign the thing i get out i'm like Whew. well you know this isn't going to be the end of that story right Fuck no dude so you gotta we, go back now we gotta build and collect right <laughs> go okay on. here we go it's collection day it's build day and collection day i get the deductible i get the first check everything's great in life right i kind of forget about her for a little bit I do my, my inspection and all. I'm like, what am I going to do? I take a magnet out there, but there's freaking, it's you know. Good. I'm in the I'm in the Serengeti. I ain't getting all the nails picked up, right? <laughs> I, I, I did it to be funny, and, and I took a video of it or something. Well, a couple weeks go by. I get the word that the depreciation was released, and she's got the check. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to give her a call. I'm going to go get this check today. We'll finish this deal. I call her up and she's like, oh yeah, I, I have the check, but I, I have to go to the, the mortgage company and get it signed. I'm like, all right, cool. Do that today. And I'll come out and she starts playing. Right. 
well, you know, I'm kind of busy and this and that. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying like, this was our agreement. Just give me the check. We're cool. Like, I don't, I don't want to mess around. I don't want to get mad. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to fight with you. You know, like, order, please, order, I feel order, bad. Order naked yeah. child. I don't want any part of it. I just want it to be gone. And seven years later, I want to tell Lee hate about it on a podcast that everybody watches. <laughs> oh my God. So we start messing around, right? And Not, the guy, what do you mean messing around? She doesn't know where the check is. She's got it in her purse and she was going there, but then she got sidetracked and she didn't end up getting oh it signed. Why did she just hit ignore and not fucking answer your calls? Just like the rest because of I'm them. persistent, dude. I'm very persistent. Nice. Like I'll call, 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 call. Knock on the door. If you block me, I show up at your house, which yeah. is what I ended up doing, right? Okay. So none of this makes sense to me and I'm getting kind of pissed because it's like, you know, it's an all right commission check, but... Not for all this, right? For what we did on the roof, this is cool. When this extracurricular shit didn't need to happen, I understand that life is life. I sat in a house that smelled like Ben Gay and cat piss for an hour. I got the deal. I hung in there. So I show up. But I didn't just show up by myself. One of my coworkers was a DPS officer, and he was, like, one of the top DPS officers for, like, 25 years, right? Retired from that. He's selling roofs. The kind of guy you want to yeah. go with you on a collection call. Yeah. Because he doesn't take shit from anybody. And, and he's at a least cop. you have somebody for a good witness. Well, see, I'm shady, though. And I'll be the first to admit. We get there, and I know what's up inside the house, right? So I'm like, this guy's name was Mike. I'm like, Mike, let's go into the house, right? But I got it in my mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something shady as hell, right? It's not out of me being shady, but I've already been in there. And I know... When I go in, I'm going to be like, you know, doing that. And that's rude. So I, she can't make me go in there and be rude, right? So I got this whole plan. I got my phone with me. I'm like, oh, my phone's ringing. My phone wasn't ringing, though. And this dude was smart. He's a former, you know, investigator. He's like, no, 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 no. Put your phone away. We're going in here together. I'm like, all right. So we go in. She's trying to find the check. She can't find it. She doesn't know what's going on. She's oh all confused. God. Mike's in there with me. There, I'm let's... stuck in here for like an hour. Here comes the kid again. This time he's just like exactly. running around. He's clothed up this time, but he's running around, you know. The sister's over in the corner. She's like just over the whole thing. You can tell she's not feeling it at all. Uh -huh. And it's like, you know, cool. The sister, we, we connected with her pretty good because I, I understood her. I'm like, you know, I get it. Life's you're not stirred. easy for you, and you don't have anywhere to go for a few more years. You're, you're here. So... We didn't end up getting the check, right? She couldn't find it. So of course it's like, she couldn't find it. So it's like, all right, here's how this works. She says, my husband has it. All right. I've never met your husband before, and he's not on the deal. So you're you're the one that I need to get this from, but I'll talk to your husband. Okay, cool. I call him up, and he's, you know, a little bit rough. You know, hey, man, I want you to come out here and look at the, the pile of nails I found in my yard. Oh, nice. Well, okay, Lee. I'm like... I'm on my way, bro, because let's go find out what else is in your yard, dude. Like, yeah. there's a king-size mattress over there filled with piss. Yeah. You're, you're talking about some nails, you yeah. know. So now I'm getting a little upset. I'm going back out there. It's a 30-minute drive. I get out there. This dude comes to the door with no shirt on, and he's a pudgy little fat guy, you know. No offense to him, but he's, like, a little short, fat dude. And I wasn't in super great shape, but I was, like, way better than this, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, look, dude, let's not play. I was like, you have the check, right? And he's like, yeah, I have the check, but I want to show you these nails. And I'm like, dude, whatever. The nail pile was huge. I'm not even going to – I'll be the first to admit. I did a horrible job trying to pick up those nails. But, dude, there were snakes and freaking lions and all kinds of shit out there, so I didn't. And he was, he was pretty mad about it. And I was like, look, bro – mow your yard i'll come back and do it and he's like you know what you're right man i haven't i haven't really paid much attention to my yard lately it's you know this is cool i i understand and we shook hands and lee i never saw or heard of them ever again right like they never had a problem they never had any issues with the roofs or nothing but i went through all that i don't even know where the story started i Did think it was the, the most money? fucked up thing you saw yeah he paid me in full oh, okay there's no no dramatic ending to that it's just well you got the money so here's the thing the dramatic ending is is that most people would quit most people would walk away most people wouldn't follow up 
roofing salesmen get paid when the final check is collected. Right. Otherwise, there's no money in the deal. If your life depends on it, then you fucking got to sit in there with a hoarder. Deal with, with it. You have to beat the shit out of a husband if you have to. Not really. Deal with it. I've had, I've right. had, look, I've had people do that to me. I had another guy that threatened to kick my oh, ass. Oh, dude, one my time. idiot dad. He fucking one time in San Antonio we had this crazy ass bastard trying to not pay. And this mother in San Antonio, imagine yeah, that for, for real, dude. And, <laughs> and sure enough, the son of a bitch threatened to pull out a gun or pulled out a gun or something. And so my dad's answer was to get on his roof. I'm like, he's like, I'm up on this guy's roof. He tried threatening to pull a gun out. I'm just gonna rip this roof off. I'm like, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> That's what we wanted. Dude. Get the fuck out. Of course, they set him down in the cop car. He's an idiot, but. <laughs> That's who taught me my lessons in life. He had a story when he was a car salesman. This Indian guy came in, and he was one of the wanting to negotiate with him. And my dad was going through some tough times in his life, and he was not having good days. So the guy not kept, in the mood to negotiate. The guy kept going. What's your best price inside the door? What's your best price outside the door? What's your best price inside the door? What's the best price outside the door? He kept coming back and Zero. coming back and coming back. <laughs> so my dad finally snapped on this motherfucker. Yeah, choked him out. Fucking took him to the door and said, this Donnie, is my hey, best price yes. outside the door. <laughs> this is my best price inside the door. This is my best price outside <laughs> That's the door. What I'm talking this about. is my best price inside the door. My, my grandpa was an attorney and had to defend him. But that was before he got in the roofing business. And my dad was a car salesman. So I looked up to the car GMs and I wanted to be like a salesman. But so when he went to the roof and I was thinking it was a dirty job. But it, it was just, just actually like car sales in the roof. And it was just different. And... Um, I grew up around this my entire life and 20 years of it, just like this type of conversation is just like when I walked into his office and was around like the salespeople and the camaraderie and our war stories and experience, drinks and hopes. And, you know, still I'm almost inspired more to do the job from this type of interaction. Absolutely. And what's funny is, is that dude, you're going to fucking help a lot of people, dude. We're going to, they need the sales manager. Chuck will be your sales manager. He'll hold your sales team accountable. He's learning directly here. He already knew how to do a lot of things really well, but he's getting that black belt and sky diamonds, elite roofing growth and contracting growth. And it's hard to find duplicates. And the way that you hire is you put content out there. You build relationships. The best people they are already working for good companies. I gave Chuck free tickets, two years to the event. I figured since his bosses wouldn't buy my program, since they had it all figured out that eventually, um, maybe Chuck would get, get to a point where he might want to move to the next direction. And now, you know, obviously like he's got a lot of value to add to y'all, you know, he can help execute and give you like a one-on-one -on -one guy that is an extension of me. And so I'm really pumped about the opportunity, Chuck. And, uh, we're gonna be selling roofs, we're gonna be selling solar, we're gonna be selling commercial, we're gonna be selling tickets. Y'all gotta hit Chuck up, man. And he's going to make a little pivot on the podcast. We're gonna set it up. You're gonna have you're gonna you're gonna run your your podcast from here. Yeah, I, I dude, I can't thank you enough. Like I said, for years, anybody that's ever talked to me, okay? And I'll I'll say this as recently as like a month ago. Mm -hmm. I was on a podcast, a prominent one in our industry, that's run by somebody that runs a prominent conference. And the question was, what's your favorite conference in the industry? And every single time I've said it was yours. Everybody that's ever known me for the last 10 years or whatever has known I've always wanted to work with you. This is an opportunity of a lifetime for me because I felt like I've, I always, I get into different rooms where I, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm never the smartest guy in the room. That's for damn sure. If I'm the only guy in the room, I'm not the smartest one, but it's like, I keep leveling up and getting into these rooms. And I mean, just this opportunity I think it's a good lesson for all the roofing owners out there that have sales managers and people in their company that want to join our program. You can't hide from the truth. We've generated 400 million in results for other people, 100 million in results. We have a lot of fun. I'm real and I love helping people. And so whenever your sales managers or the people in your company realize that they, they want to use my Facebook strategies, they want to use my recruiting strategies, they want to learn commercial. There's ways we can collaborate. I could literally be on the same team as you. And if that would have happened with your company, then essentially we wouldn't be sitting here. I could have helped you in right. San Antonio. I could have fucking made a difference. I've helped a lot of companies like Mammoth. You saw them. They're, mm -hmm. they're killing the game. Absolutely. Even there, you know, I mean, doesn't even need a storm. You know, shout out to Scott Edwards. He's a badass. But, you know, the truth is, is like he's coachable. And, you know, he's also a guy that, you know, he's worked for Aspen Contracting. He's heart learned a lot, learned a lot in roofing, hired business coaches. He's not a, he's a college educated 
guy and 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 you know you, the bottom line is after you had this much training you're like what this what's this guy know that i don't know what the fuck what the fuck is he going to teach me and you know eventually even after getting to know the guys like god i could barely stand listening to the guy but i he's right and i'll tell you what it doesn't matter if you love it like it or want to leave it it's fucking working so i'm going to listen I'm going to swagger jack. I'm going to execute. And Scott did a damn good job of that. Absolutely. He's recruiting the fuck out of salespeople and fucking generating leads and killing the game in San Antonio. So, you know, I'm glad that you're here, that you can help them, that you can do all these things. You know what? I am too. And I think that, you know, when I look at the the past stuff that happened, Mm -hmm. I think it was growth more than anything and Mm -hmm. personal growth. I, Mm -hmm. I'm a completely different guy than I was four years ago or four and a half years ago when that all started. Yeah. And just because it didn't work out, it could be good. It could work out later on. Yeah. I think it's a great thing. I'm still great friends with everybody that was involved. Mm -hmm. Um, talked on the phone yesterday, you know, Mm -hmm. so there's nothing but love. I want those people to collaborate with our group because I feel like they would be addition to our community. I do too. I think that they are represent the same things I do, but I also think I'm a hundred million dollar roofer for a reason. You should take some like notes. I agree, dude. And I think that and if you're such a tough motherfucker and I get on your nerves so much, there's a cage, right? Well, that's kind of extreme, (laughs) but Hey, it is what it is. That's, that's a little wrong. It wouldn't be fair to start striking people. There's jujitsu. The That's gen- true. The gentle art. And we're jujitsu te- is very gentle. And we're, I will no, say no, this we're real teaching quick. Roofers. Can can I say something real yeah. quickly? I saw Lee Hate tap out a black belt. Don't be the other giving out my fucking <laughs> secrets, dog. Let them think I'm a bitch. That's gonna get edited Let out. Let them so think hard. I'm a bitch, dude. Because oh, all these roofers all right. think they're yeah, tough, no, especially the ones Lee that used to wrestle. Whoop the other day. Hey, it's crazy. We had a guy come in here, 230 pounds. Oh yeah, I wrestled high school. I'm like, well, if you can take me down and, and hold me there, then uh, you yeah, went well, without me tapping you, then you can get my coaching package for free. Well, they don't last long. Yeah, I guess he was paying, but he did not pay. He he was another one that is a good guy, good friend. But look, guys, sometimes people just don't want to pay, whether it's because of an ego thing or because they're tight. And it's, it's sometimes that type of scarcity mindset or the thing you're not willing to address that makes you not have like insane results. And in jujitsu, like, yeah, I've had some big moments, but also yesterday I got the shit beat out of me by a black belt. Mm-hmm. I, I, and but the day before that, this guy that was a financial advisor, way smaller than me, purple belt, he fucking tapped the shit out of me. You know, the reality is guys, there's always someone else out there to serve you your medicine, uh, your humble pie. And you know, some people say, don't let your highs get too high or your lows get too low, but that's bullshit. You have to try and really enjoy those championship moments. <laughs> of and course. Fucking, whenever, you know, things are like in a middle state and you're not, you gotta, you gotta think about what it was like at the high state. And then when things are down, you gotta know like, you know what, this is going to be over soon. And uh, jujitsu is a great therapy for me. Um, it's a community. I've recruited a lot of salespeople. And so this idea that I'm not taking a cage fight this time, I just want every single bad motherfucking blue collar to grapple with me. And if I have to fucking go with 15 of y'all, I will. And y'all can all pat me out, you right. know? Uh, and we're also doing some Muay Thai too. So we're gonna be doing some sparring. We're, you know, I, I figure instead of fighting one person, just yeah, figure, dude, step up. Like how many people want to punch figure, Lee? Yeah. How many people want to choke yeah, him I'll out, figure right? I'll just do the group thing, like group discount, like everyone getting yeah. a line. Guys, buy the tickets today. Click my link, buy the tickets, and you can fight Lee. You can choke him out. You can do whatever it is There's y'all want to do. There's a guy, Donald Sanchez, that's going to take me up on this. He's a fucking 65. I, I know fights. Donald He's Sanchez. He's 220 pounds. I, I know him. He's a beast, and <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be I'm gonna be taking some beatings, okay? So it's not just going to be me administering the beatings. Have you seen? Donald no, I've never video met footage. Oh, or, I've seen the footage. But. I, he was one of the guys that I talked to on, on some of my consulting calls over the years. Well, and he's, he's a good, good dude, but that's definitely he's a legit a fighter, bro. No, he is a legit world fights. champion. And he's going to be bringing some of his fighters and we're going to be doing the title, a blue collar BMF title. Uh, that's how we like, instead of stupid networking events, you know, we do an hour or two of fighting and then we, we have a little fun. That's the ultimate networking. I think last oh, year it was, it was a room with probably what there was 1500 people in yeah. that, in the room for fight night. Yeah. And everybody was having a blast. I was sitting like 10 feet away from Jocko, Dustin Poirier, Tim Crater. This year, there was like this everybody year, Tim's there coming back Forrest Griffin, Gilbert Burns, 
uh, Charlie Radke, my coach, just got in the UFC. Um, Hannah Goldie, she's in the UFC. She's a badass. She's friends with the person who puts the fight on. And we're actually holding a $25,000 grappling tournament. Roofers don't get this, but jujitsu is like taking over the world. And basically I went to this thing called ADCC mm -hmm. and this is like the Olympics of jujitsu. And so eight of the best athletes, as a matter of fact, I hired the ADCC champion and they're competing for 25,000 cash. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a rush uh, into the event at the beginning of the event. Uh, all the Florida jujitsu people are, are going crazy about it. And, these people are going to see a jujitsu event be mixed with a bunch of roofers and i'm going to recruit their ass into the roofing business it's a perfect mix i mean because i want people that are willing to go to uncomfortable places that want the american dream and will fight for it yep so you know people are always asking me how do you recruit how do you get good people well you got to build a show in your actual business like pt barnum in this jujitsu competition giving away thirty thousand or twenty five thousand dollars is that mm -hmm. and hopefully you know everyone sees that we're all just doing it to make contractors get in better shape, raise the status for the blue collar entrepreneur, uh, yeah, elevate help the industry guys make a lot of money. And, uh, you know, if you've ever thought about, uh, MMA or jujitsu, I mean, you can take it as serious as you want at a seminar. You don't have to go full or anything like that or get hit in the head. I'm going to step in and, and do it. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to step in I, and do I, it for sure. I'm going to make sure that you get training before so that you're confident and you get out there and you have a little bit of an advantage because even with like four practices, dude, they can teach you so much in four practices. Like you don't realize it. Yeah. As long as I don't draw the one dude in the industry that I oh, don't realize doesn't like me hey, and listen. I get knocked out. Hey, listen. no worries though. You know what? I saw it last year. It was the coolest thing ever. The best, the best story from last year was that dude that got in and his opponent canceled at the very end. And, and the he ended badass up, roofer got in there. Yeah, he ends up fighting like a world champion. And yeah. it was like, dude, I met that guy the next morning and I forget his name. No, but he's I've seen a badass him. dude. And I told him, I was like, dude, nothing but respect. His name's Patrick Moose. He's Moose Rufin. And he fought a jiu-jitsu world champion. And the guy's 24. He was, he's guy's Muhammad Ali's coming back. The guy's it name was, was Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Ali dude, up. like that right there, you know the guy Fucked could probably up. fight. And then he came and participated in the whole conference, was coachable. Yeah, super guy. Shit, I've been knocked the fuck out. You know, he ain't the only one. Me too. Never in any professional environments, but man, you know, my, my, my fighting record is pretty respectable. Look, you don't have to fight if you show up to this event, but if you're feeling froggy, this is the fucking event for you because we have a lot of fun. We're going to make a transformation. Everybody needs to level up their fitness. Everyone needs to level up their, their confidence. And that's one thing like the, the martial arts and being in great physical shape, dude, it just, it, it, it exudes a different level of, um, you know, confidence and Ab absolute confidence and and it's just knowing that you know i did this work nobody else could do the work for you to get to that physical condition no, it's a to lot get of where fucking work at. it's a lot of work it's I mean, hard and you have to be dedicated and you can't lie to yourself and i always say you know what you can lie to anybody but if you can lie to yourself you're you're done you might as well just not even be on this earth anymore if you can tell yourself you know i tried my hardest and you know you didn't and that's what always gets well, everybody me. Everybody watching this probably understands making it to this point that, that, that they're maybe not giving it their all. That right. maybe they could do better. Look, I'm with you, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel that way sometimes, I don't know, at different points of the day. It could be more than you think. But that's like me being afraid of hitting my potential of leaving stuff, something on the shelf. That's what drives me. People want to say, I don't, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of anything. No. Everyone, that's full of shit. There's everybody's afraid of something. Well, and everyone has to. It's not fear that's the problem. It's having courage to walk through it, how to do it in spite of the fear, and uh, that's why I, it's such a good analogy. And and so yeah, sign a waiver, come do some extreme personal development with us. Um, it's the best event of the year. I've said that every single year that I've been there, and I stand by it Wes every Watson's single time. Fucking Brad, Brad, Wes Watson, prison, Brad Lee. White collar, blue collar uh, salesman. I'm be asking them to do jujitsu. I'm be asking every bit, of, every one of the roofing speakers. So we're gonna be getting this 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 party started. And you might say, Well, how, Lee, how are you gonna do this? How's this all gonna go down? Well, we're gonna do a half a day on Friday of learning, and then we're gonna go into a jujitsu workout. It's like PE. Everyone's gonna put their PE clothes on, and we're gonna learn a little Muay Thai and jujitsu, and break it down over like a two-hour time period, having lots of fun. At the end, we'll do a little rolls, we'll do a little sparring. It'll be great. P 
people can create content. It's going to be awesome. That's how we get started. Then Saturday is all day, baby. We go in freaking hard in the paint. Sales, marketing, Facebook, brand. Dude, it's not just about like um, how many famous people can come in here and woo you and wow you. Um, these people are people that have impacted my life, that have been my coaches. And the reality is, is I'm sharing my roadmap. That's what's different about my event. Because I'm actually a $100 million roofer, and I've generated all these results. My best students, the guys that are speaking this year's new, new speakers, Richie Coletti, he's here. He, his accountant sold 700000 from him. He comes to us. He's doing $2 million, Now he does eight. Um, Michael McGovern, first year in business, $3.6 million. His first day in roofing was like literally a week before the conference last year. And so it's like, okay. Then you got people that are just like, you know, to the moon with success you know like the guy that was just in here sean who, yeah who's nine figures as a solar entrepreneur even zane another nine figure solar entrepreneur so we're gonna be teaching you solar how roofing and solar works together and it's not just for roofing contractors solar contractors it's for all contractors all entrepreneurs and as we go through sales operations leadership my scaling roadmap my my best and most successful students you're also gonna get like at the end of saturday the highlight, which is uh, MMA fights. We're gonna be having some of the some of the best. Like you said, Donald Sanchez is bringing some guys. We got some of South Florida's top MMA fighters. And uh, there's gonna be some people going to war. I'm excited about that. I've been a fight fan since the very, very beginning, you know, since before MMA even existed. And I've, UFC since the very first event. So like, this is exciting to me. And I always tell everybody, if you don't go to Lee's event for any other reason, go because it's so much different because it is fun like it's you don't real. see that shit anywhere you can't else. fake anything in the fucking cage no. all these fake ass bullshit gurus there's no fucking faking it on the mats and i just want to let everybody know i put my heart out there not just in the content not just in the business not just into the people but i don't give a fuck if you see me get choked out beat up i'm here to entertain and get your attention people because we're raising the status of blue collar we're raising the status of roofing we're building the wealthiest conglomerate in this industry and we're going to create thousands of blue collar millionaires like literally this goal is to get 20 people from this conference to be a part of this first roll up and literally make these guys multi-millionaires we're buying roofing companies i've purchased three of my best clients we're, we're going to get these guys a higher valuation because they're rolled up with us and if anybody wants to get the american dream they know they want more real estate well guess what in a recession when you have tons of fucking capital look the banks are all in on blue collar they're in on home service they want to buy your business and so look Go to tothemooncontractor.com if you've been watching this, if you made it to this point. I'll show you what our Sky Diamonds Elite program actually is. We guarantee when you execute this, you have an eight-figure roofing and solar company like Clockwork. Look, we promise that you get 25 jobs to pay for the program, but we run your Facebook, we run your Google, we coach you every week. We break you down and give you a sales manager like Truck. I train you every day and your team every day in the university. You get all of my forms, all of my docs, customized training manual. It's literally a $100 million business in a box that we implement with you. We hold you accountable to be the best version of yourself. We don't just work on the business, we work on the physical. We get your goals, we map out a meal plan, we get accountability in your lifestyle, and that's how you hit your fucking goals. You surround yourself with winners. And if you're watching this right now, you're with the winners, and we wanna see you at the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. Chuck, thank you for doing this, dude. Can't wait to do more podcasts. Really felt the energy. We're gonna have to keep this going. Keep a uh, roof, real roof talk. Well, we, might, we might have to call it keeping it real. There you go. I got, I got something very similar to that already. So we could definitely make it happen. I appreciate this opportunity to be on here with you. How can they find you? Straight Energy. You can find me on Facebook, Chuck Allen. I'm all over that. I'm all over Instagram, Chuck Allen 9. Give me a call here at Lee's office so I can get you guys some tickets to the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. Help out with anything Sky Diamonds related. I'm easy to find. I'm like worldwide. So prestige worldwide, Chuck. Allen, Coming blue collar American dream maker guide. All right, guys, we ain't playing. We want to help you. We'll take you to the top. We'll see you at the top.